Hello, this is the luckiest maths teacher in the world. Thank you so much for tuning into this video in which we look at expanding brackets. So expanding brackets is when you have something that looks like this with brackets, you end up with something that doesn't have any brackets. So the way we expand brackets is by using the distributive law, so called because what you do is you take the thing out of the brackets, you distribute it to the first thing in the brackets, so it's a times b, and then you distribute it to the second thing in the brackets to get a times c. Of course, if no operation's written, it means it's times. So this is a times what's in brackets, a times b, and a times c. Let's look at some examples. So if we wanted to expand this expression here to outside of x plus 4, Remember, it's two times what's in brackets. We distribute the two to the x, two times x. We distribute the two to the positive four. So two times positive four gives you positive eight, and we're done. So let's try this one, three outside of four x minus five. We use the distributive law. So we distribute the three to the four x. So it's three times four x. A lot of people would make the mistake and say that it's 7x, but it's 3 times 4, which is 12, and then we have the x. And now we do 3, not times 5, but times negative 5. So 3 times negative 5 is negative 15, and we're done. So let's try this one here, a little trickier, because we now have a negative out the front. But we follow the same process. So we distribute the negative 4 to 3. So negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. And we distribute the negative 4 to this term here. It's not x, it's negative x. So this is negative 4 times negative x. Negative times a negative is a positive. So this will end up being positive 4x and we're done. So sometimes you'll have to expand brackets where there are a few different pronumerals or letters, but we're not going to do it any differently. We distribute 2a to 3b, so we go 2a times 3b, 2 times 3 is 6, then write the pronumerals. 2a times 7c, so it's a positive times a positive, 2 times 7 is 14, and then we just write the pronumerals. How easy is that? So what if we had to expand something like this x outside of x minus 3? We're going to do it the same way. So we go x times x. Now that actually gives you x squared. So please make sure you don't make this mistake that a lot of people make. So x times x is x squared. x plus x is equal to 2x. But here we're timesing, not plusing. You'd be amazed how many people get something like this and they go x plus x, they write 2x, which is wrong. So it's x times x gives you x squared, then x times negative 3 is just negative 3x, and we're done. So if I have to expand something like this, may look a little different, but we're going to follow the distributive law like we've done in all previous examples. So we're going to go 3x times 5y, so 3 times 5 is 15, and then we have the x times y. Now we're gonna go 3x times negative 4x. So once again, positive times a negative is a negative, so it's negative 12, x times x is x squared. So don't do 3x plus 4x, it's 3x times negative 4x. And that's how I got the x squared there. All right, now let's look at examples where you have to both expand and simplify. So sometimes we'll get expressions like this where we have to expand the brackets and then simplify the expression. Now we've got a few operations here. So we're adding something, but remember no operation written means time. So this is a three times, whatever's in brackets. Now remember order of operations still applies when you're doing algebra. Multiplication comes before addition. So in order to expand and simplify this properly, we're actually going to do this first. We're going to expand the brackets first. So we're going to leave the 7 alone. Now we go 3 times x, which gives you 3x. And then 3 times negative 4 gives you negative 12. So I have expanded. I've done the first part of this question, but I haven't simplified. So to simplify, you need to collect like terms. Remember, you can only add or subtract terms 
if they're like terms. Like terms have the same sequence of pronumerals. So this term here, 7 and negative 12, they are like terms. So 7 minus 12 gives you minus 5, and I'm going to leave the 3x alone. Now, I can't simplify this further because minus 5 and 3x are not like terms. This one has an x, this one doesn't. Both terms do not have the same sequence of pronumerals, therefore I can't add or subtract. So this is actually my final answer and I can't simplify any further. Let's look at another example like this. So let's now look at expanding and simplifying this expression here. So once again, I don't do 10 minus 5 first. A lot of people do that, but I know you won't because you're smart, you're a superstar. You're going to realize that we actually have to expand the brackets first because this is a times. We do multiplication before subtraction. So I'm going to leave the 10 alone. Then I'm going to distribute minus 5 to 6. So minus 5 times 6 is minus 30. It's a negative times a positive gives a negative. Now I'm going to distribute the minus 5 to minus 2x. So I go minus 5 times minus 2x. So this is a negative times a negative. Therefore, the answer is positive. And then 5 times 2 is 10, and we have the x. Just like I did up here, I can only add or subtract like terms. So 10 and minus 30 are like terms. N neither term has a pronumeral. So you know I can just do 10 minus 30. You've done that a million times. So that's minus 20. I'm going to leave the 10x alone. The reason it has an x, obviously, the other term here does not have an x. These are not like terms, so I can't simplify any further. So let's expand and simplify this expression here. So once again, I have 3x plus something. That's a plus, but this here is a times because it's not written. So once again, I'm going to expand the brackets first. So I'm going to leave the 3x alone. So I'm going to go 8x times y, which is 8xy, positive times a positive. Now I'm going to go 8x times minus 5. So 8 times negative 5, positive times a negative, gives you negative 40, and then I have an x. Now I need to simplify. So I have three terms, 1, 2, 3. I need to ask myself which are the like terms. This term has an x only, as does this term. These two terms are like terms. So I can go 3x minus 40x. So 3 minus 40 is minus 37. So 3x minus 40x is minus 37x. I'm going to leave the 8xy alone. These are not like terms. This one here and this one here, not like terms. So why is that? This term here has a y. This term here does not have a y. This term and this term do not have the same sequence of pronumerals. Therefore, they're not like terms and you can't add them. This is my final answer. I don't go any further. Let's look at now expanding more than one set of brackets at once. So on your screen, we now have two expressions here and here. In both cases, we're going to expand the brackets and then simplify. So let's look at this one here. So similar to what I said before, because no operations written implies its times. So I need to do multiplication before subtraction. So I'm going to expand this set of brackets, expand this set of brackets, and collect like terms. So looking at the first set of brackets, I go 3 times x is 3x, 3 times positive 2 gives you 6. Now I'm going to expand this second set of brackets. So I go minus 5 times 4 is negative 20, negative times a positive is a negative, and then I go minus 5 times minus x. Negative times negative is positive, so it'll be positive, 5 times x. Now I collect like terms. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4 terms. So this term here and this term here, they are like terms because both of them has an x. 
and that's the only pronumeral. So 3x plus 5x is 8x. I can add together these two terms because they're like terms. So similarly, this term here and this term here are like terms. Both have no pronumeral. 6 minus 20 is minus 14. You can put it in your calculator if you're stuck. This is my final answer. I can't simplify any further because this term and this term are not like terms. I can only subtract terms if they're like terms. So I'm done that. Let's move on to this one here. So let's start by expanding the first set of brackets here. So I'm going to go 4a times 2b. 4 times 2 is 8. And then I write my pronumerals. 4a times negative 3c. So 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. And then write the pronumerals. So now I'm going to expand this set of brackets here. 2a times 8. No, it's not 3a. It's 2a squared. Now, 2a times negative 5b. So positive times a negative gives me negative, and then I write the pronumerals. So now I have, again, four terms. One, two, three, four. So this term here has an a and a b. This term here has only an a and a b. They are like terms. So I just add the coefficients. 8 minus 10 is minus 2, and then I write the pronumerals. So 8ab minus 10ab is negative 2ab. These two terms here have no friends. They're no like terms. This is the only term with a c in it. This is the only term with an a squared in it. So I'm going to leave these alone. I'm just going to write them exactly as we saw them before. So this is my final answer. I can't simplify any further because these three terms are not like terms. Sure, they all have an a in them. But this one is the only one with a B, this one's the only one with a C, and this is the only one with an A squared. So then I'm done. We're just going to do one quick worded problem now. So let's look at this worded question here that involves the distributive law. So country charges and citizens in tax 5,000 plus 25% of what they earn over 60,000. So if a person earns X dollars and X is more than 60,000, we're going to write a simplified expression in terms of X for the amount of tax they pay. So there's a lot of words there and it can be a tricky question to understand. But let's go through. So the person pays 5,000 in tax plus 25% of, so 25% of means 0 0.25 times. To find 25% or a quarter of something, you times it by 0.25. So now I wanna write what they earn over 60,000. So what they earn over 60,000 is just the amount they earn minus 60,000. So this is an expression for the amount of tax they paid in terms of X. So now I can just simply expand the bracket. So I leave the 5,000 alone like I did before. So 0.25X, 0.25 times X gives me just this. And 0.25 times 60,000, a quarter of 60,000, that gives me 15,000. This and this are like terms. So what I'm going to do is leave the 0.25x by itself. It has no like terms. 5,000 minus 15,000 gives me negative 10,000. So what that means is a person will pay in tax 25% of what they earn, subtract $10,000. So let's say, for example, a person earned $100,000 a year. So the amount of tax they would pay they would pay 0 0.25, one quarter of the 100,000 minus 10,000. Now you can put that straight in your calculator and you'd find that they pay $15,000 in tax. Now that's exactly the same answer I would have got if I subtracted X equals 10,000 up here. But this is a much simpler expression. All right, thank you so much for tuning into this video. This has been the luckiest maths teacher in the world. Have a great day.